Hi guys doing welcome to indoor hydroponics I'm John your indoor hydroponic test dummy with a day 30 update of the cracky strawberry girl guys growing 14 ever bearing tribute strawberries in a cracky 10 gallon totes underneath some t5 fluorescence and it's not even day 30 even though this video is a day 30 update we have to do a few things before we get to day 30 because these plants have taken off they are exactly 25 days into the grow at this point and we've got some good flowering going on we've got some good leaf production going on and we've got some good root production going on okay this one is experiencing a little bit of algae so we need to correct that these two with the darker tops are not uh, experiencing any type of algae growth so I've already had to change this one out I'm gonna have to do some modifications on this one remember light plus nutrient plus water equals algae so you want to keep everything in a dark environment guys so what is the maintenance that we're gonna do let me show you. All right, guys, tribute ever bearing strawberries. Typically, you'll get three flushes of berries, okay? But what we want to do is something drastic, and that's prune off the first set of blooms. Why? Because we want our production grow going into plant production for the first part, okay? So we're sacrificing first production so that we get bumper crops in round two and round three later on. I know, I know, it takes some of the fun out of the grow, but believe me, you want good, strong, healthy plants because good, strong, healthy plants will produce good, strong, uh, and big berries. In addition, any type of runners that come off of these things, we want to get them off there as well. Why? Because they're sucking the energy out. They're actually sending out new plants. We don't want them to send out any type of new plants. We want strawberry production later on. So let's get all of these small little berry blossoms off of here. And let's get all the runners off so that these things can be supercharged and grow into big, strong, healthy adult plants so that in a month or two, we will have lots of berry production. Okay, runners and flowers buds that type of thing have all been pruned off none of the leaves have been pruned they're just sitting here and this will produce a stronger healthier plant from here on out for the next couple of weeks i'm going to continue to prune off any type of berry production any kind of runner production that type of thing i want these plants kicking into high gear for future berry production mode now i've done this method a couple of times okay and i've shot a couple of videos and i've gotten moderate success with strawberries but this round i'm doing something different and what i'm doing is experimenting with the lighting schedule what do i mean by that food water light that is essentially what we need to do to have a successful hydroponic grow guys it's not that complicated okay so what do i mean by that i, I mean we need to have proper nutrients for the plants at the correct parts per million or concentration during whatever stage the the life cycle of the plant is in in other words these are seedling going into maturity and you want to make sure that your parts per million is appropriate for that so we don't burn out young plants secondly we want to make sure our ph is within range usually 5 8 to 6 2 is appropriate why because that's a that is vitally important for the plant because that is optimum ph for plants to take up those nutrients Third is lighting, guys, and lighting is super important. You can use high metal uh, or uh, metal halide, high intensity bulbs. You can use um, high pressure sodium bulbs. You can use CFLs. You can use fluorescence. In this instance, I'm using T5 fluorescent bulbs. Okay, for this particular cracky grow. What I am doing different than what most people do in hydroponics is I'm getting away from the 16 and 12 hour light cycles. What do I mean by that? During vegetative state, atypical hydroponic growers will provide a 16 hour light cycle with eight hours off. Okay. 
and once the plants reach their desired maturity we reduce that photo cycle to what we call a bloom period all right and what that is is it's reducing it down to a 12 hour light cycle on and 12 hours off now why do we do that well when we do that we send a signal to the plant saying that the season is past midpoint the growing season is past midpoint and that sends a signal to the plant that it has to start producing and producing quickly otherwise it's not going to be able to carry on its gene and what is the primary purpose of human human beings and plants well it's to carry on the life cycle right it wants to keep producing so that is why we do 16 hour light cycles and 12 hour light cycles but i'm going to do something a little bit different this year with these what do I mean by that? I'm going to mimic Mother Nature's light patterns a little bit more closely. So I've got all uh, my lights set up on a timer and what you'll notice on the wall is what I've been doing with the lights. And I'm essentially working from a spring into a summer type photo period. Something that these plants would do naturally in nature. We're mimicking it. So on 4216, when these things were transplanted from bare root, I started out with a 12 hour light cycle, which is contrary to the 16 hour light cycle in a vegetative state. On 414, 2016, I bumped it up an hour. On 422, 16, I bumped it up another hour. So now we're at 14 hours on every day. Eventually, I'm going to get to a 16-hour photo period, and I'm going to let it sit at 16 hours for approximately four weeks, at which point I'm going to start gradually reducing that photo period back down like we experience in Mother Nature. The intent there is, is that at that point, these berries are going to start kicking into high gear into production mode. Now, the experiment will be is if we can then duplicate the experiment using the same plants and bring the lights back up and then back down and then back up and then back down and induce continuous strawberry production. When we're dealing with things like algae, what you'll notice up front is the algae will start to form around the outside, around the outside, around the outside closest to the light source and then once it starts to establish it'll start eventually taking over your entire nutrient bin and that is bad okay i'm a big proponent of having extra uh, totes and lids okay in case things go bad when things go bad we correct them up front and then we continue out our grow okay guys so today is may 1st 2016 and it is officially 30 days from transplant and this is where we fix our little algae problem okay so I've been having it uh, go on for I don't know about four or five days and uh, I cleaned it up as best I could changed out the nutrient and uh, there's a little bit of algae staining still in there okay is that dangerous no we're okay all right what we want to do is limit the amount of light coming from up there to down here and how are we going to do that? We take an extra lid. Problem solved. Problem solved. Okay, so we're going to use some aluminum foil here. And what that's going to do is a couple of things, okay? It's going to limit the light from getting in there. And it's also going to reflect light back to the undergrowth of the strawberries. So we're going to kill all two birds with one stone and it's actually going to have a little bit of benefit here, okay? All we have to do now is transplant and we can do this still because the plants are still young our strawberry plants into here. See that? We got some good rootage going on, man. We want to get them roots right back down in there. All right, guys, day 30 from transplant and we have 14 beautiful tribute ever bearing strawberries going here these look better than any type of strawberry I've ever grown 30 days out grown completely cracky no oxygenation no nothing set it forget it underneath the lights a little bit of maintenance with the runners and some of the first berries just chop them off type of thing remember we're looking for long-term production here on indoor hydroponics 
No nutrient changes with the exception of the one in the middle, obviously, due to the algae. However, the other ones do not require it at this time. There's plenty of nutrient, plenty of water left in those reservoirs, okay? And when we do start doing nutrient changes, probably in another few weeks or so, what we're going to want to do is only have to fill these things up about halfway. Why? Because the roots are growing right down into the nutrient. Now, we want to fill them up halfway so there is that air gap between the base of the plant and the nutrient. And why? Because if you look right there, see those fine, fine white roots peeking out of the bottom, out of the base right there? You know what those are? Those are oxygen feeding roots, okay? And that's what makes cracky work. Those take in the oxygen and don't drown the plant, okay? So when we do refills cracky style, we definitely do not want to fill them all the way up. We only want to go about halfway. So the bottom takes in the water and nutrient while the top takes in the air. And we'll continue to have very clean and beautiful looking plants. May 6th. 2016 I will continue to do my incremental one hour increase of photo period which we will go to 15 hours May 20th we're gonna go into 16 hours at that point I'm gonna introduce some fans just to cool down the room a little bit uh, even though we are growing with fluorescence we do get a little bit of heat in here okay and at 16 hours i think we don't want to stress the plants out we'll introduce some fans from there we might even get some flowering going on and the fans will help with the pollination piece but that's another video so guys thanks for watching the first 30 days of our indoor cracky strawberry girl. I think it's going to be very successful, very fun. And if we continue on with this up and down photo period light pattern, I think we'll be able to get multiple harvests before these plants go dormant. As always, guys, thanks for watching here on Indoor Hydroponics. Please like, subscribe, and comment when you can. And come back for day 60, man. That is where these things are probably going to double in size and it's going to be absolutely awesome. Take care.